Hello, and welcome back to another video from 3.5 Archive. Today we're going to be doing our 45th D&D 3.5 Prestige Class review, looking at the Survivor Prestige Class from Savage Species. This is definitely an odd Prestige Class. This might be the only Prestige Class in D&D that you can qualify for right after level 1. Uh, the Survivor is meant for characters who have survived torture or captivity by horrible monsters. But its only prerequisite in game terms is that your highest base save bonus is lower than your character level. This can be accomplished by simply being a level 1 commoner who has a plus 0 in all of his base saves. As for whether this is a good idea, that's another matter. And as for whether or not your dungeon master will let you be a commoner, well, power level wise, most probably would let you be a commoner. Um, some new DMs would freak out at the prospect of you having a prestige class at level 2, but as we'll see as we go through this uh, prestige class, they really don't have much to be worried about. A character that wants to qualify for this prestige class also needs to spend a month studying uh, and preparing their body for the you know ordeals that they will undergo, um, or rather to you know put to use the trauma from the ordeals they've undergone to make themselves more resilient. Uh, so a not insignificant amount of downtime is needed, but otherwise. Uh, if you're not going to be a level 1 commoner, you're going to have to wait till 5th level in any class, when your highest base save bonus will be plus 4. And that is, of course, what the prestige class was intended for. It's just a little bit of an odd glitch that you can qualify for it as a level 1 commoner. Assuming, of course, that your character level uh, actually counts as that, as NPC classes tend to count as 1 less, so some could say that your effective character level is 0, but that's not what character level actually means, so it should work. So that's the requirements for Survivor, uh, but what does the Prestige class give you? Uh, While well, the Survivor is also unique in that its base attack bonus progression, or rather lack thereof, uh, is unparalleled anywhere else in 3.5. You have a plus zero base attack bonus uh, for all five of your levels, so your base attack bonus is not going to improve at all. And as far as I know, there is no other Prestige class that does this. On the upside, if you can consider it one, uh, you do get good saves in all three saving throws. Um, spellcasters don't get, you know, any improvement to their spells from this prestige class. The survivor uh, does, however, get a d6 hit die and 2 plus intelligence modifier skill points per level, uh, with your class skills being any you already had as class skills. So you're not going to get any new ones, but you're also not going to get any base attack bonus from this prestige class either. So right off the bat, that's a crippling disadvantage. If you're planning to fight at all, you're going to need base attack bonus. I suppose you could get away with this for a spellcaster's prestige class, but this one, again, is not going to improve your spells at all. It's just going to give you a few different features that help make your character more resilient. So at level 1, you get Uncanny Dodge, which allows you to retain your dexterity bonus to armor class when you're flat-footed. This is only really helpful in situations that you don't want to be in in the first place, i.e. being flat-footed. Uh, it won't come up often enough to be useful by itself. It is a barbarian feature, but and it is a, a rogue feature as well, but you're you're really not going to see this happening, you know, often enough for it to be worth taking a prestige class for. At level two, you're gonna get evasion, which on the other hand is one of the most useful defensive abilities in the game. Uh, as you probably know, anytime you succeed on a reflex save for half damage, you take no damage instead if you have evasion. The only issue here is that you could have gotten this just by taking two levels of rogue, and your reflex bonus uh, would have been the same. So I guess the advantage here maybe is, you know, getting a bonus to all your saves instead of just reflex, but you're also giving up, you know, any base attack bonus improvement and the sneak attack that you would really want from being a rogue. At level three, you're gonna gain improved uncanny dodge, which means you can't be flanked by rogues unless they are at least four levels higher than you. This ability only really matters if you are up against rogues, or, you know, at least creatures that have sneak attack, like a Nazthrun Rakshasa, for example. So it's likely not going to come up very often. Uh, this is a Barbarian class feature as well, but it's not one of the stronger ones, and it comes alongside a bunch of, you know, much more powerful class features for the Barbarian. So you could consider this to be effectively a dead level for this prestige class. At level 4, you're going to gain improved evasion. This is an improvement to evasion, and it means that uh, if you make a reflex save for half damage, you take half damage even if you fail, and then you also take none if you succeed. This is a high-level rogue or monk ability that doesn't come until levels 10 or 9 respectively. With this prestige class, you can get it at level 5 if you started as a commoner. 
Otherwise, you're going to be getting it at character level 9, the same as a monk. So you aren't getting much out of this. You could have just taken 9 levels of monk instead, or 10 levels of rogue. Or you could take 1 level of commoner, 4 levels of this prestige class, and have a plus 0 base attack bonus at level 5. So yeah, if you get fireballed, uh, you have a pretty good chance of, you know, surviving it. But if you try to hit the uh, spellcaster that cast a fireball against you, you're probably going to miss, even if they're not wearing any armor, or have any bracers of armor, or anything like that. So, so far this prestige class is striking out pretty hard. And the level 5 feature really doesn't do much to help it. At level 5, you're going to get damage reduction 10, or sorry, 5 slash dash, which means that it's going to be always um, a damage reduction of 5 against, you know, any weapon attack. Uh, including natural weapons, of course. You know, any, any physical damage will be reduced by 5. The problem is that by this point, you've gone 5 levels without an improvement to your base attack bonus, and you've, um, you know, gone without any other features. So while you are a lot stronger defensively, um, you're not any better offensively, and while you have some better saving throws, um, you really haven't gained very much from this prestige class when you look at the big picture. And if you want damage reduction 5, um, there are plenty of magical shirts from the miniatures handbook that you can use to get damage reduction. There are all sorts of other methods to get it, either temporarily or permanently. Damage reduction is very strong, and in some ways it's overvalued uh, by the D&D developers, especially at higher levels. Um, but even so, uh, this prestige class really isn't going to be worth it for pretty much anyone. Now, it is important to keep in mind that this prestige class is from Savage Species, which was geared towards monster characters. So either playing, you know, special classes that were made from monster hit dice and level adjustment to kind of allow you to play a monster from level one, um, or just to play, you know, a monster character or NPC or something like that. So this prestige class is a really easy way that, uh, you know, any monster that qualifies for it can be given a few levels in this, and it's a really quick and easy way to tack on some defensive abilities and a few more hit dice onto a monster. It's not going to increase their to hit ability, but at higher levels, a lot of monsters aren't going to have much trouble hitting player characters anyway. And improving their saving throws is just going to be extremely frustrating for spellcasters. So this prestige class is really meant to slap on monsters. Uh, it's a very easy thing to do without a lot of effort, and it gives them some really annoying defensive abilities that can really help shut down the character's plans. Uh, presenting this as a prestige class for, you know, player characters at all, it's a really bad idea. While the damage reduction looks tempting, uh, the amount of, you know, other features and abilities that you're going to give up just to have damage reduction 5 is going to leave you uh, really far behind and just be a detriment on any adventuring party you're, that you're part of. So overall, I would give the survivor 3 stars for concept and 1 star for execution. It does have some use, so maybe 1.5 stars. Um, I would give it, you know, four stars as a monster prestige class, um, but, you know, one, one and a half for execution, three for concept, only because it's just so absolutely strange, and the idea is interesting, you are somebody that's gone through torture or torment or some other horrible ideal, and you came out mentally and physically fortified, um, so that is a good concept, but the, you know, the, the rules execution here and the features it gives you are just absolutely useless, despite how, uh, tempting they may appear at first glance. So that's going to be about it for this D&D 3.5 prestige class review. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and so on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on 3.5 Archive.